alaikum. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, it was a real pleasure this morning to have a closed round table with the CEOs of the FMB sector. Saleh Lota, thank you for you and your team for putting together this event. Um, you are all stakeholders in the food security umbrella. You all play a vital role and I have to also applaud all your achievements that you've done to make UAE food secure. It's because of you, so thank you. I thought of taking the opportunity today to just uh, give you a glimpse of what it is that my team and I are working on, uh, where are we heading to, just a little touch on the uh, national food security strategy that uh, His Excellency Saleh was also mentioning. So, the clicker works. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to point to there. So first of all, what is food security? So when I ask people, what do you understand when it comes to food security? I get a mix of um, responses. Uh, is it silos with food? Is it agriculture? Is it nutrition? It's all of these is a yes. So the definition is ensuring accessibility of safe, nutritious, sufficient, and affordable food for all at all times. As you all know, UAE has over 200 nationalities, so we've got a lot of tastes and cultures that we have to cater for. Oh, it doesn't want to move. Okay, why is food security a global issue? These are things you've heard in the news. We've got population growth, um, we've got climate change, which is affecting us all. Most of my colleagues are in New York now talking about this particular subject. Uh, which is also affecting the food security, water depletion. The UAE is a water scarce country um, and food loss and food waste. So the last pillar is about us, about how our behavior when it comes to food, what we're eating, what we're putting in the, in the rubbish bin. So now we look at the term disrupting food system. So there's two systems we need to look at really changing um, or disrupting. It's how we're producing food and how we're consuming food. So we need to look at technologies, we need to look at new ways, and of course all of you are in the midst of continuous R&D to try and improve how foods are being produced, the different tastes that people are now uh, more going towards. Uh, there's a whole lifestyle change as well. So we are a very fast and convenient um, or fast and convenient consumers and our taste buds keep changing as well. So you are always having to cater for, for that need. Cons consumption, this is something each and every one of you, including myself, we have to work on. What we're eating, what we're putting in our bodies and what we're putting in the rubbish bin plays a big role in the food security file. So when His Excellency, or when His, sorry, when His Highness, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, uh, Prime Minister, Vice President of the UAE, ruler of Dubai, appointed me as Minister for Food Security, he asked me to do three things. He said, Mariam, we need a plan for the country, we need to adopt technology, and we need to advance R&D. So my team and I put together the plan, the National Food Security Strategy, we took the first steps to adopting ag tech in the UAE, which we did through a government accelerator program, which I'll show you some pictures of. And we're taking now steps in trying to align R&D in the country. One of the things the uh, CEOs uh, of the FNB sector were telling me this morning is we need a platform to do our R&D so that we can advance even faster in the products we have and showcase them around the world. So we're working on that point. So this is the plan. I'm gonna go through this a bit faster because I'm sure some of you have already seen it. The UAE has 18 main food items. Why so many? Because of the 200 nationalities that, that we have. Uh, some countries have just five or six or under 10 items, but we have 18 because of the uh, diverse uh, population we have. Then this is the strategy. So. You'll notice, number one, it's facilitate global agribusiness trade and diversify international food sources. 
One of the key pillars of why the UAE is food secure is because we have enabled this accessibility. Our wise leadership have always looked at the importance of partnership, trade. We have some of the best world-class facilities when it comes to ports, airlines, and this has all enabled the accessibility of food. So we really need to, these are, these are the good, uh, or let's say these are the advantages that we have to use. Yes, the UAE is a desert country, it's water scarce, but we've got infrastructure which we can use and work on. The second pillar is how we can enhance local food production um, enabled by technology. Also, listening to the CEOs this morning, there is a lot we have to do in terms of uh, breaking up this defragmentation when it comes to regulations and policies, trying to centralize it, harmonization, harmonization of standards. These are all things we'll be working on. And uh, as I said to His Excellency Saleh Lota, this is the first session I'm having with you, but it won't be the last. I want to continue this conversation with you. I want to listen to the barriers that you're facing because you are on the ground facing these. And we sometimes don't get those information as direct as we'd like it. So I want to continue this conversation. Um, at the same time, also creating an ecosystem for R&D. Um, so these are some of the things we really want to work to and also how we can make it a bit more, let's say, attractive and more comfortable for local producers as well. Because we all know, at the end of the day, we are what we eat. If we can make sure that items that are perishable can be produced locally in a good quality and good standard and sustainable throughout the year, then it's a win for all of us. Third is reducing food loss and food waste. This is in line with the SDGs as well. So by 2030, we must at least half our waste. Um, so um, in that pillar, we'll be working towards that as well. For us, at the end of the day, we are also recognized as one of the worst countries when it comes to food loss and food waste. So we have a challenge in this and we have to really work hard to this. And all of you, I know you have it also internal policies as well to try and reduce food loss and food waste. We need to think of ideas about circular economy, how some waste from one industry can be used as input for another. So there's a lot of work to do that, to do in that. Food safety is of huge importance, of course. We need safe food um, and improving nutritional intake. What tools can we give ourselves, consumers, to make better choices when it comes to choosing the food? And then fifth, we are a country that imports more than 90% of our food. How can we ensure that we are ready or sort of emergency preparedness when there's some shocks in the global food system? Across these pillars, we have the enablers. Um, we've got five of them, so the governance, we were talking about the defragmentization of standards and policies. You see in the UAE there's, there are many entities, federal and local, working on some aspects of food security. And it's my role now that we've uh, got a strategy is to ensure that we have a governance model that works as a one-stop shop platform to discuss anything related to food. Um, R&D agenda. Uh, it's really important that we step up our R&D. Um, there are people around the world producing products uh, that sometimes I feel we should have thought of that. Or, for example, sugar. We're importing so much sugar, but we've got dates and huge quantities. Why are we not looking at how we could convert dates into sugar? Um, hydroponic systems. So this is uh, systems that use no soil. They're using coconut peat. Why are we not looking into palm tree peat? So these are all ideas that we have to test and try and, and basically have products that come out of the UAE. Database, um, this is something that was also brought up in the CEO roundtable this morning. We need reliable data, absolutely right, for any policies, any decisions. For all of you to make proper business plans with correct numbers, you need reliable data. So we'll be working on that as well. Human capacity, the FNB sector is, uh, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard the topic of emeritization now as well. The FNB sector, the food security sector, 
has certain skills that um, a lot of, let's say, our national capacity doesn't have at the moment. So we really want to step up the efforts and how we can bring academia with the private sector as well to try and upskill and get the nationals that are interested in the sector to uh, be excited about the sector. And I, I sometimes, when I have the youth circles and I speak to them, I'm like, I'm not looking for the next farmer. If you like technology and you like food, you could be the next agri-technologist. So I'm giving them a kind of cool name, yeah, something that gets them excited about it. Food movement, this is in a way awareness. There's so much we have to do on awareness. Um, with the accessibility of the internet, there's so much information out there and sometimes you just, you're overwhelmed with all the information. What is right? What diet should I follow now? Should it be paleo? Should it be low carb? And should it be intermittent fasting? There's so much out there and we really have to make sure the education and uh, correct information is brought to the people so that they can make the choices that suits them. So that's in a nutshell the strategy. It has about 38 programs um, in all the five directions, but I won't go into all those details soon. Adopting technology is a very important aspect. We use the government accelerators. This is um, the Prime Minister, His Highness, he launched a government accelerator, which is a platform you use to solve issues. So for example, an idea could be that all the issues we discussed this morning could be put through a government accelerator program. And basically we say, what problems do we have? And these problems need to be solved in a given time. So it's usually about 100 days. But this is something we need to work closely with you. So it's something you have to, you have to dedicate some staff from your team to actually sit with us and go through the process and find solutions so that by the end of the cohort, as they call it, we have solutions in place. Okay, so this is the idea of the government accelerator. And we successfully launched basically a new ag tech sector in the UAE. Um, and just this is a glimpse of some of the 10 initiatives. One of the initiatives, you'll see the Emirates Sustainable Agriculture label. The CEOs this morning also talked about a label of trust. And this label is something we've uh, come up with also with, with ESMA to actually uh, bring up a UAE national label that, um, that gives you the meaning of trust, sustainability, so it's looking at all aspects of human rights, animal welfare, um, uh, water use, uh, power use, so it's, it's, it comes from a best management practice and it's something that we feel should be brought in so that we can enhance uh, what you're doing. And you mentioned something UAE grown, so this is something that's already incorporated in that. That's already been admitted to the cabinet, so we're waiting for that to hopefully be approved and then it'll be something that everybody can, can use um, along, of course, a, a line of conditions and checklist. We also, uh, one of the things when I spoke to the private sector was uh, they said, Mariam, we need six or seven licenses to open up a company when it comes to food production. This is a huge cost on us. So thankfully, in those 100 days, we were able to come up with a unified uh, modern agriculture license, which some entities have now. So this was a great achievement. But these are just some examples of what we were able to achieve in the 100 days of working closely together with the private sector. So maybe this is something we could look into for the FNB challenges that you're facing. Advancing R&D, I just wanted to show you some, some examples. Uh, as you've heard, um, His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, uh, Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, has um, initiated an incentive package of one billion scheme to support agri-tech companies. Um, so this is really to push R&D to the next level. So this just shows the, the commitment also from, from the government. They really want to push uh, the sector. Emirates Airlines has invested now to build the largest vertical farm um, in the region. Um, it's supposed to be uh, producing and starting to, as you know, Emirates Airlines, they produce about 250,000 meals a day. So this is the catering group. And for those 250,000 meals a day, they need fresh greens and tomatoes and um, as they call microgreens. Um, so they've now seen from a business model that it doesn't make sense to buy anymore, but farm their own 
vertical farm, then they have their standards directly and they know their food from A to Z uh, instead of going through all the checking procedures that they have to do because they're an airline um, catering company. So this is coming up as well, which just shows that we're now moving into a new era of how we produce food. Um, again, this was also to do with the incentive packet for R&D, uh, just to show you also the political will behind it. Now, the nutritional labeling policy, this is something I mentioned in the, in the round table. This is an initiative to help consumers make better choices uh, when it comes to food. Uh, as you all know, it's now voluntary, on voluntary basis, and I told the CEOs as well, I said, I'm here to listen to you and to discuss this with you before we move forward to making this compulsory. So please, I do really welcome to have your comments on this. The uh, workshops we had with the public were all for this. Um, so um, I had some discussions this morning already in the CEO's roundtable about this. But as I said, these are things, so we've, we've um, the aim is, or the plan is, to make it compulsory by January 2022. Um, we have some time until then, and we will discuss with you closely about this policy. Because at the end of the day, this is a policy to try and help consumers make better choices when it comes to their health and their diets. And this was launched yesterday, or the day before. <laughs> um, we want to wake up the world to what the UAE is doing when it comes to food security and uh, show the people around the world that we invite anyone who has ideas across the food supply chain of what technologies or what methods can be used to solve uh, food system problems in environments such as the UAE. So we announced the Food Tech Challenge, which is a global challenge. Uh, the prize money for this is, or the value of prize is $1 million. And basically we wanted to get the community excited about thinking of home farming, community farming, but also have startups and youth think of new ideas. Uh, I get so many coming to me, go, Mariam, I've tried this at home and this is, this is working so nicely, but who, who do I go to to help me with? So this is now a platform uh, for us to try and get the kids and the, uh, let's say, the, our young generation to look into new ways of, uh, of our food systems. And it's not just about farming or producing food, it's food processing, it's distribution, it's across the supply chain. So anyone with any ideas, and of course all of you are welcome as well. So discuss it with your families and if there's anything, you can just register on the website, which is foodtechchallengeuae.com. So this is in a way a, a nutshell of some of the things and some of the initiatives that um, we're looking at at the Food Security Office. The private sector plays a huge role in the food security agenda, as I said, and again, His Excellency knows that I will come again to speak to all of you. I had a really, the round table this morning was very good for me, uh, interesting insight, and I will have discussions with my colleagues um, about the issues that took place. His Highness, the Prime Minister of the UAE, his, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, he he calls us nation designers. So he says, you need to know what it is that you can see in the UAE happening after 10, 20 years. So one of my, um, let's say, um, passions or, or inspirations to have here in the UAE is to really, you know, see food systems in the cities. So hopefully we'll see vertical farms, uh, we'll see um, zero food waste, we'll see things, uh, uh, we get people in their household or home levels have a certain degree of self-sufficiency when it comes to perishable items. So these are the kind of inspirations I hope to see. And with that, I will, I will conclude. Thank you very much for listening. And I think that's the last slide.